Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we start, I'd ask our city clerk to read the uh, saying of the week. Thank you, Mayor. Without credible communication, and a lot of it, employee hearts and minds are never captured. Thank you. Call the 14th <laughs> regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Born. Here. Berg, Here. Serta, Here. Davis, Here. Groff, Excuse. Hannah, Here. Kittleson, Here. Clayunas, Here. Manny, Here. Meyer, Here. Montemayor, Here. Radke, Here. Ryan, Here. Susha, <laughs> Vanderweel, Excuse. and Verhassel. 14 present. Quorum is present. Now it's time to pledge allegiance to our beautiful country. Alderman Radke, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Recky. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Oh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would move to dispense with reading of the minutes and ask that they be approved as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Resignations. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's a letter from David Gallianetti uh, advising that uh, due to uh, time constraints and Difficulty with attending the afternoon meetings, but uh, he's resigning from the Mead Library Board. That's for a motion to accept and file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignation is accepted. And of course, appointments. Uh, this is David today's date. I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Nancy Mudre has been considered for appointment to the Library Board to fill an unexpired term of David Gallianetti, whose term expires 4-30-08, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over, and as a, as a follow-up to Alderman Bourne's request, there is a little bio of this individual on your desk. Continue. And this is dated uh, October 2nd. Alderman <coughs> James Brown to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Alderman Person Jeff Radke, whose term expires 4 16 signed by the mayor. And Alderman Graf does not need a little bio, so I we'll ask for a motion to confirm. Move to confirm. Second. Motion to second to confirm. Any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> motion, one opposition. Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. That's it. Thank you, Attorney McLean. <clears throat> Public forum, city clerk. Um, first on the list would be Dave Cookick. <clears throat> Thank you. And Dave, could I have your home address, please? W6355 Judy Drive. You may want to get that mic as close as you can to you. There you go. And that's Judy Drive? Right. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Perez, members of the Common Council, and members of the audience. In the wake of yesterday's memorable gift of the William A. Heisen Pavilion to the city of Sheboygan, I wanted to follow <laughs> up with some interesting statistics. For any statistics about Maywood to be meaningful, you must understand what we do. When I refer to we, I am referring to the cooperative effort between the Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association of Sheboygan County Incorporated, the Environmental Park Trust, and of course, the city of Sheboygan. Hand in hand, our mission is to promote environmental stewardship through real life experiences. The 120-acre Elwood H. May Environmental Park, or Maywood for short, provides opportunities for environmental education, recreation, and preservation through programs, events, research projects, restoration projects, and more. Our highest annual attendance over the last 10 years for programs and meetings was 21,900 in 2003. Attendance fluctuates depending on weather and staff availability. Our average annual attendance is 14,203, of which one-third to one-half are from students. 
Although students come from all over southeastern Wisconsin, about 50% or greater come from the city of Sheboygan. We work with all ages of students. At this very moment, we have nine days of North High students and seven days of South High students coming out to Maywood. However, our staff does programs and has written curriculum for all ages. You may be interested to know who works at Maywood. Well, in 1999, the staff consisted of the following people. We had a city-paid full-time director, a city-paid full-time naturalist, a city-paid part-time caretaker, a city-paid and privately funded part-time secretary, a privately funded part-time environmental education specialist, a privately funded part-time custodian, a privately funded, privately funded full-time administrative assistant, a privately funded part-time intern, and state-funded full-time six-person WCC or Wisconsin Conservation Corps crew members, which totaled 14 people working at Maywood in 1999. Since 1999, Maywood has added 35 acres to the existing 120 acres in 2005. Uh, which is now called the Burr Oak property. We've also added some acreage in the corridor between Evergreen and Maywood <coughs> Parks. And we've also added 8,783 square feet to the Ecology Center for a total of 16,258 square feet. Changes to the staff since 1999, well, the director has remained the same, I can thankfully say. The naturalist has been replaced twice, each time with a six-month hiring delay to save money. The care caretaker retired in 2000 and was never replaced. The secretarial position was eliminated. The environmental education speci specialist left in 2000 and was never replaced. The custodian left in 2001 and was never replaced. Our intern, uh, we have a few of those uh, from time to time, but none at the present time. Our trust administrative assistant left on October 6th of this year, but should hopefully be replaced soon. And the Wisconsin Conservation Corps crew, uh, the state eliminated, eliminated that program completely. And we've also added a part-time privately funded receptionist, which was just hired in 2006. So if you add that all up, our total staff as of October 16th, 2006, is now three. Actually, two and a half. Two full-time people and one part-time person. Why am I telling you this? So that you can better appreciate how things get done at Maywood. Each time a staff person is hired, you always get more than one person because that staff member works with a large number of volunteers. Maywood has hundreds of volunteers. This September's Maywood Earth Ride had almost 300 volunteers for that one day event alone. The handout you were given lists the various hats the staff members wear along with the associated volunteer assistants. Therefore, when you divide the budgeted amount allocated for wages by the number of paid and volunteer staff at Maywood who are handling all of the duties listed, I think you'll see that Maywood is exemplary and its efficient use of time, talent, and money. Thank you. Thank you, David. Next on the list is Marge Sagali. And Marge, I need your home address, please. 2732B North Savannah Circle. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Could you let me know when there's one minute left? Certainly. Thank you. Um, the first thing I'm going to be talking about is to update you um, on my open records request that I had requested from the mayor's office. Um, at that time, uh, there was an email that was sent to Chief Kirk concerning record or files that were being kept on all department heads and departments. So I requested it under open records. And at that time, there were two file folders, one on the police station and one on other departments. I received um, 40 pages, which consisted of eight complaints against our police department, and the other folder consisted of one complaint against our transit. Um, the ones that dealt with the police station were all handled internally, and all of these complaints were unfounded. And I need to repeat, they were unfounded. The one for transit, that was also handled internally. Now what I am now going to be leading up to is the ordinance on the Commission for Community Relations. I think that our department heads have all done a very fine job in keeping track of everything that goes on in their departments. This Community Relations Commission, I feel, 
will be taking away the authority of all department heads in the city. I feel also that our department heads, you have given them that authority. That's what they're being paid for so that they can keep track of what and what does not go on in their departments. Now, I feel also that we're going to be micromanaging our departments by this commission. We've stated over and over and over again, and I have heard from the council floor, we do not need to micromanage or we should not be micromanaging our departments. And this commission is going to be doing exactly that. Um, our city workers, I think, need to be very wary concerning this because it's, there are going to be complaints filed against them, and instead of going to department heads, these are going to be going to the commission, which, if you take a look at this ordinance at the present time, and I do know this ordinance has been referred to law and licensing, but I want some questions to be asked during this time. Um, one of them is um, you have unions involved here. You're going to be going over union heads. The unions have a right to be in on anything that takes place with these complaints. That's very important. You cannot do something without union reps. You also are going to have citizens filing complaints against other citizens. Now, when this takes place, um, do these people bring their attorneys in front of this commission? Because you're going to be airing this publicly. Now, if this citizen who has a complaint against another one, that these are unfounded, now can this citizen come back to this commission and to the city or and the commission and file suit against them for uh, going, to, going against their reputation? We need to be very, very leery of what's taking place on this commission. Um, another thing, and I'm sure Attorney McLean will be addressing it, is that... Um, they have authority to conduct public hearings and to administer oaths to persons testifying before it. Now this, I think, is way over the limit of their boundaries. First of all, if you take an oath, if you lie under that oath, will they be charged with perjury? These are all things that need to be looked at on this commission, and I hope you do that. Very, you need to be very cautious as to how you handle this commission. Because if it's being held publicly and people are going to have their names out there in public, you better know that some of them can come back at the commission and the city. So I thank you for your time. Thank you. Next on the list is um, Henry Capitillo. Henry, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, 1619 North 38th Street. And that's in the town of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Again, I ask the council to seriously look at the priorities that face you when developing and approving the budget for this coming year. The mayor cannot approve a budget on his own. He needs the approval and consensus of the city council. Please ask questions. Be diligent. Be assertive if necessary. Do your homework and research budget items that you do not agree with or you do not understand. Ask for information if something is not fully explained. If your concerns are not answered, do not give up. Make other older persons and the mayor accountable for their budget requests or changes. If you disagree with some budget item, do your utmost to bring this item to the council floor for discussion. And lastly, do not agree with budget items only because you are told by the mayor or other older persons that you, are, that you are questioning these items will be seen as obstructionist and not supportive. Remember, you were elected by the people in your district and not because the mayor or any other older person supported you. Keep in mind, only you must look at what city departments are more critical to the safety and well-being of the community. I have heard the phrase quality of life bandied about during the funding decisions of certain questionable items. Remember, quality of life means different things to different people. For example, to one person, it means being able to take a vacation in the Bahamas or buying a BMW or Mercedes. To another person, it may mean being able to play golf at Whistling Straits or Black Wolf Run or regularly have dinner at the immigrant room at the American Club. To one person, it means being able to afford to provide a college education for their children and getting a second car so mom can go to work. 
For another person, it may mean being able to put enough food on the table for their family or having decent clothes for their children. For a single parent, it may mean being able to afford childcare or just having a job to go to. Your job is to try to determine the majority of the taxpayer's belief is the quality of life budget issue. Please let it be the latter of the aforementioned examples. Be realistic in what the city can afford to spend, but at the same time, look at what the city cannot afford to cut or under budget. How can you justify building a tourist center at $325,000 when the same tur tourist center was proposed by the Chamber of Commerce to be built with private funds? The, mer the mayor was quoted in the Sheboygan Press as saying, this would be a great place to sell City of Sheboygan memorabilia. You do not have to spend $325,000 to do this. All it takes is a website, and it will only cost you several thousand dollars. One response already given by certain individuals that these are room tax dollars and not property tax dollars. I beg to differ. A tax is a tax no matter how it's generated. Answer this question. Who pays for the room tax? People like you or me if we choose to stay at Blue Harbor or any other lodging establishment in the city. Mr. Richard Gephardt, finance director, also quoted in the Sheboygan as say, press as saying that this money could be used to build the tourist center. Is it just a coincidence that individuals who do not agree with the mayor or are on different sides of political issues stand to lose their existence, such as the police department or possibly even the city attorney's office? The city, cannot, the city can save over $500,000 just by letting the Chamber of Commerce absorb the city tourism department and its staff. If the city council is intent on spending the $325,000, then why not use it as part of the city hall re remodeling and transfer the tourism department to be housed in city hall? If you are really serious about holding down spending, be consistent to, to do, be consistent, do not approve spending dollars only because the mayor or other elder persons tell you, well, this money has already been budgeted, the money has already been borrowed, or if you don't spend it, the money cannot be used to pay down the city debt. I am sure that if the money is not spent, it can and will go somewhere that it is really needed. I show you a newspaper article dated November 15th. A group files eth ethics complaints. The article states, group is asking for a referendum that would require the voters to approve city spending levels. Would it surprise you if I told you that some older persons in this city council chambers and numerous individuals appointed by the mayor to standing and newly created committees were part of this group? That's hard to believe because of how, how some of these individuals have voted and recommended to spend your tax dollars. The following statement is quite appropriate for this situation. Power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I show you another item most of you are familiar with, these are checks that a credit card company sent me in the mail. I know it's easy to use these checks to purchase anything I may or may not need. Excuse me, Henry, would you like an additional minute? You're at the five yes. minutes. Okay, go ahead. I know that it is, it is easy to use these checks to purchase things that I may or may not need. One thing is absolutely certain. If I do use them, I could get myself in debt, as many other people have already done. Sometimes it is necessary to borrow money in order to meet certain critical needs in your life. Paying for health care, fixing your car so you can go to work, buying enough food for your family. The lesson, the lesson to learn here is that there is no free lunch in this world. Everyone has to pay in one manner or another. For example, if you cut the police budget, sooner or later you will have to pay in one manner or another possibly by increased crime, loss of life, or some other tragedy. You as elected officials must decide how will the taxpayers pay and what will they get in return. Will their quality of life as they see it be affected positively or negatively? Only you can make that decision. Be wise in your decision-making process. Excuse me, Henry, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. And last on the list is John Berner. And John, can I have your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. 
Thank you. Uh, Mr. Capitello had said something about the uh, you know, police department that if we cut back now, we'll pay later. Well, the national news tonight had it that uh, the crime rate has gone up in the United States and the biggest rate was in the mid Midwest. So the crime rate in the Midwest is higher than in the whole United States. Uh, I watched the common or the committee of the whole last week on the tasers, and there were some very interesting comments and questions. And one older person said about be a pregnant woman being tased, and I happened to think about it and using a little common sense. What pregnant woman would put her fetus in such a position unless she didn't care? I mean, there are pregnant women you can see in taverns doing drugs, committing crimes, and they don't care about the fetus they're carrying. How many babies are born HIV positive from women that don't care? And then we had another older person about the handicap. And I agree that Yes, the handicap. But you can only have so many policies. And what people don't realize is that handicapped people, some of them only have a mentality rate of a child, but their body is big and strong, usually stronger than most people the same size, because they don't realize their strength. My wife used to work at a halfway house for um, retarded people. And there were times that the police were called that people got very physical. Then there was another person about a lawsuit. Lots of lawsuits in this country. Doctors get lawsuits. In fact, right now, pediatric doctors are going back into a different area of medicine because their insurance rates are so high because they've been sued so much. To have a policy on every little item is impossible because every case is different, whether they're handicapped, pregnant, it's always different. And that's why the police urge some of you common council members to go along with a ride-along, to understand that a traffic stop is not just a traffic stop. On the television this week, oh, about three days after the meeting, I happened to be running through the channels, and there was a police officer on the traffic stop, simple traffic stop, until the guy got out of the car, came at the police officer, and started beating on him. Police officer pulled out his gun. The guy laughed, went in his car and locked it. So then the police officer put away his pistol, wasn't going to use it, broke the guy's driver's side window, pepper sprayed him. The guy got, went nuts inside that car. And finally another police officer came. He knocked out the passenger side, and they both were pepper spraying him. And this guy's going wild. It took four officers to bring him down what one taser gun could have done, simply. But simple traffic stop. The officers have different policies they go by, but every situation is different. So they have to improvise and adapt to each situation separately. So for you to basically have, well, in this case, you've got to do this. In this case, you've got to do that. It's impossible. Common sense. And another common council member said, because they listed Spanish people, so many, and the teenagers, and Hmong people, so many, and Caucasian. I don't care what they are, neither. But any form you fill out today, they ask you, are you Hispanic? Are you African-American? Are you Caucasian? And the same way in the police report, when they fill that out. 
the same three are on there. So it's just, it's nothing against... Excuse me, John, you know, would you like an additional minute? Your five minutes are up. Would you like well, your additional minute? Going. Okay. So uh, it's, to a police officer, it's, it's just so routine that when they write up something, it's so many Hispanics or so many African Americans. Or, it's just... It's just uh, something they do automatically because they fill out so forms. Their forms have it on there. I thank you. Thank you, John. That's it. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is a consent agenda 14-1 through 1415. President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we accept and file all the ROs, uh, accept and adopt all the RCs, and put all the general ordinances upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Radke, Ryan, Susha, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 1416 through 1418 to be referred. Report of officers 2, 1419 by the city clerk submitted a communication from Fire Chief J. Les Tusky stating that the fire department was awarded a 2005 Life Safety Achievement Award issued by the Residential Life Safety Institute in conjunction with the National Association of State Fire Marshals. President Burke, a uh, motion to accept and file. Uh, yes, I uh, move that we file the document. Second. <coughs> motion and second. Uh, Chief, would you like to say a few words with respect to this? Before we take the vote. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Perez and members of council and, and members of the general public. I uh, just want to say that um, I'm real pleased and honored that we received this award. What this award does is it recognizes fire departments throughout the world that have, um, through a combination of emergency response and fire prevention and public education programs, have gone a year's time without a fire fatality. Um, we received this award mm -hmm several years back in the 1999 through 2001 um, time frame and there was several years where we were um, unfortunate enough to have fire fatalities in in our community in this last uh, year's period that we were able to through the hard work of of the firefighters both in emergency response and public education and with help from the the mayor's office the council the community supporting all these safety efforts, we've been able to uh, go that year's time without um, uh, that fire fatality or significant injury. So it's just a, a great testament to our community, uh, the council, the administration, and the firefighters and all the work they've done in order to, uh, to create a positive uh, situation in the city here as far as fire safety. Congratulations, Chief. We will call the vote. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 420 through 422 lies over. 423 through 14, 1423 through 1432 to be referred, except 1427 will also go to Committee of the Whole. Please make that notation. Resolutions introduced three. 1433 by Alderman Manny, authorizing an enter into a cable TV extension agreement with Charter Communications. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Honor. I move that we suspend the rules. Is there, there's a motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection? There being none, please continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I move that uh, we put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we have been in negotiations and analysis uh, about the contract with Charter and with them uh, for a good number of months. 
we have run into a roadblock which is not of our own um, creation. Federal legislation is pending that would impact such contracts. Therefore, such companies as Charter do not want to sign contracts at this point. If they do, they may soon find themselves at a competitive disadvantage with the wireless community, uh, with AT&T, et cetera. Therefore, we would like to be authorized to extend the contract as currently in place through December 31st of 2007 that will protect us legally as well as maintain service in that time frame. And that will give us adequate time of, of an adequate time frame to have the federal legislation completed, its impact upon towns and municipalities clear, and thus the clear ability to sign a contract that's appropriate. So I ask for support in the resolutions on motion for approval. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in reading over the document, I was wondering if uh, Alderman Manny could explain a little bit what this uh, PEG Access Capital Fund is, uh, what the PEG stands for. Thank you. Yeah, uh, the PEG oh, Fund is the fund that goes towards the city. Uh, we have then dollars to use to take care of the technology that we need, new cameras, et cetera, to do that on Channel 8, which we do. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Okay, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1434 by Alderman Groff, Meyer, Vanderweel, Vanderweel. Uh, Susha and Ratke authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the dock space agreement with HH2 Properties, LLC. Alderman Meyer, need a motion to suspend? Ask for a motion for suspension of the rules. Is there any objection? There being none. Ask that the resolution be put upon its passage and the uh, document be filed and accepted. Second. Second. Under discussion? There being none. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. The excavation going on down there looks pretty exciting, and I'm hoping we get this going pretty darn soon. And I think the citizens of Sheboygan are looking forward to finding out what will this Highlander look like. And I think many of us who have seen it in Milwaukee sort of have an idea of what it will look like, and I'm glad we're going forward. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Okay, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Perhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Serta? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1435 lies over. 1436 is, uh, w will be withdrawn. There is no action needed. It's been taken care of by city planning. So 1437 through 1438 to be referred. Report of committee six, 1439 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 3280 based on failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Under discussion, is Keith, Keith Slavinsky here this evening? He is not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. And Davis? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1440 to be referred. Report of Committee 7, 1441 by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operators license number 6913 based on failure to cooperate with the committee and his record of convictions related to the licensed activity. Alderman Radke. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I've asked that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion second. Under discussion. Under discussion is Richard Rios here this evening. He's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alvin Retke. Please call the roll. Kittleson. Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. And Hannah. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1442 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 7244 based on his record of violations related to the licensed activity and his habitual violation of the law. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to refer this back to committee. Second. Motion second referred back to committee. Any discussion on that? There being on, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1443 by finance recommending filing document authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for, for police facility and city hall architectural services. Alderman Hanna, motion. Accept and adopt. Accept and adopt. Is there a second? Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Alderman Kilson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I'd just like you to, someone to explain um, just exactly what does this mean? The uh, filing of, uh, I can tell you what, what I know, and yes. if you need further information, we can have uh, Mr. Gephardt. But this, uh, this particular contract was uh, discussed in finance, and the contract was a contract that was in existence and had been, he well, it had been held for several times. It's a contract that deals with an issue that's no longer in place because a new police station is scheduled to be built in at 23rd location, not City Hall. So although some of those uh, stipulations may still be reworked, it'll be worked in a different form. Okay? All right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. <clears throat> Racky? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. and Clayunas. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1444 through 1454 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 1455 by finance recommending approving the revised capital improvements program recommended by the Capital Improvements Commission for the program period 207 to through two, uh, 211 and adopting the 206 program for implementation. Alderman Hanna. Motion to approve and file. Motion to accept and adopt. Accept and adopt, sorry. And that the resolution be put upon its passage. And the resolution be put upon its passage. Is there a second to that? Second. 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 Under discussion. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess once again, could you just, could we have someone from the committee explain exactly what this means? Just. Just to clarify it, what, what does this mean from the Capital Improvements Committee? I can, I can do that too, and if Thank you'd you. like further explanation, we can ask. Uh, this is a capital improvements program that, uh, that's approved every year based on a five-year schedule, and these are the recommendations of the Capital Improvements Commission that met and evaluated and prioritized every request that was made from every department, and then it was categorized, and then the, the, the top, uh, selections were approved by the committee, uh, by the commission, and subsequent to that, there was an adjustment made in the new uh, in the cost involved for the police station. May Please I, continue. You're may, on. I, may I ask? The police station is not included then in this in this yes, capital improvement. It's a whole separate issue. No, it's in there. It's in here. Yes. Okay. Then what? Do we have a list of the what are the capital? What are the improvements? You should have had that a long time ago. Yes. No. You don't have that. No. Okay. So I'm just wondering what they are. Uh, Mr. Gephardt, would you please address this? I'll get to uh, all the little lights here. It'll blink in. Yes. Maybe you can just explain the process. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I, I believe there was an attachment originally to well, your document. So you said, no, it's true. Uh, that had the five-year program as recommended by the commission. Uh, it does include a debt issuance in 2007 of $8 million for the police facility. 
we do have another approximately one million dollars of uh, funds on hand so we're looking at about a total cost of the project of around nine million and um, it also include uh, City Hall remodeling in 2008 of debt issuance of 3.9 million. Uh, there is an, another uh, 2008 project for the wastewater um, uh, 16th Street siphon for one million dollars. Uh, beyond that, the general program is our um, cap, as you're aware, for the general program is three million dollars a year for debt issuance. And uh, that is what is being recommended for 2007. That, uh, should I go through what the programs are within that then also? I don't know. I think the, do you want within to? At least 2007, do you want me to? Yes. Please. Okay. Uh, it includes $750,000 for stormwater management, $150,000 for sidewalks, $150,000 for the fire department for major equipment. One million dollars for street paving. One hundred and fifty thousand for park improvements. Thirty-five thousand seven hundred for voting machines. One hundred and fifty-one thousand seven forty-one for financial software. Uh, Six thousand for transit's CAD system. Five hundred thousand for riverfront improvements. One hundred and six thousand five hundred and fifty nine for the uh, fire department for station number three for the heating and ventilation system, and that would complete the three million dollars for 07. Okay, uh, please stay up there just in case. Alderman Matty, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yes, for Mr. Gebhardt, um, this is an educational moment especially for folks uh, north side of the city for Eisner Avenue. We had talked about Eisner Avenue being in the 07 uh, capital improvements budget. It has been deleted. Is it in the 08 budget? I believe it is. I believe it, it is in the 2009 budget at this point. It's 370,000 in 2009. I believe I'm correct also that we have to postpone it at least until 2008 to potentially receive dollars from the um, federal grant monies that would go towards pedestrian biking further extension and, and pathways and such. That's my understanding so it also. It has to be at least 2008 and thus can't be happening in 2007 if we want to get the grant money. Correct. And it is in the schedule for 2009. 2009 at this point. For 370000 from the city funds. May I ask Mr. Holton if the 307000 for 09 is adequate with uh, township money and with federal grant monies? Mr. Holton, would you please come up? Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The, the whole project is about $2 million, uh, today's dollars, and we don't know what we're going to apply for for the grant money. We're looking at the sidewalks. We're looking at bike lanes. And my best estimate right now, I'm probably looking at hopefully to try to get five to $600,000 for those two items. Then there's also a split then roughly between town property of 25% of the frontage and the city property of 75%. It's not down to a million and a half and three-fourths of that. You're about $1.2 So. Uh, for total funding on city funds, we're probably looking at it, but we need about a million dollars in 09. And the delay is also because of, with that trail mine, we have to go through federal design guidelines. So we have to do historical research, archaeological research, and there's, there's, there's quite a process that takes about two years to go through uh, to get the project ready to go. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Holton, Mr. Gebhardt, and Alderman Manny answered lots of my questions. I appreciate that. Thank you. Alderman Cleunas. Thank you. My questions are answered as well. Thank you. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, what we are saying here by this report is that we are allocating $8.8 .8 million for the police department construction budget. 
Uh, is this correct, Your Honor? Yes, eight million. Rather than the thirteen point five million that was originally passed by Capital Improvements Commission, sir. Correct? Yes. Okay, and that was done about the same time, uh, or before the landfill was purchased on North Twenty Third Street uh, to build our police department with a thirteen and a half million dollar budget. Uh, I am. Uh, I, I stood up in this council and said at that point that I had serious reservations about buying a polluted piece of property. Um, and I also had uh, grave concerns that after the property was purchased that the budget would be cut and we would be building a insufficient police facility. By us voting for this, is this saying that we are approving the 8.8 .8 million and that it is no longer an issue of discussion? Or will this be an issue for the Committee of the Whole? By, <coughs> excuse me, by voting for, for the capital improvements recommend, uh, recommendations as they stand, uh, if specific at your questions means that it's $8 million for the police station with a million dollars already in escrow. So it would be a total of $9 million. Now, your second phase of that question was, is there no longer room for discussion? There's always room for discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to vote against this. Alderman Burke, President Burke. And so thank you, Your Honor. I guess a couple of questions. Uh, first one is this uh, vital that we pass this tonight, or can this uh, uh, lay over. I guess my concern is I've seen the earlier versions of the cap improvements program. I've got them at home, but for me it would be very handy rather than to have a verbal report to have the spreadsheet that actually outlined uh, the the money, where it's coming from, etc. And I guess my question is, is this uh, vital that we pass this document tonight or can we hold it over so that we each have copies of the spreadsheet so we can speak very specifically to the issues on there? Mr. Gephardt, please step up. We're going to answer your question, Thank President Burke. I guess it is the prerogative of the council what they wish to do here this evening. Uh, the normal process that we have gone through before uh, with the Capital Improvements Commission meeting in August is that the council would have the recommendations in September and generally they have approved those recommendations in September and then uh, that follows the into flows into the budget in the capital project funds and the debt service funds. Um, so at, at this point it would still leave some questions open as we are heading into council in, in November uh, with, with the budget at that point. Um, Again, I, I thought there was schedules that were originally attached to. Originally, when this came in, the actual resolution, there was a um... breakdown. I apologize for not everyone it having them. It kind of looked like this on the back of your resolution. There were like three or four pages. So that was the original resolution, and then it was referred on. It's not recopied second time around, so it, if that's what you're speaking of. Right, I guess that, that was. Would uh, our process be significantly interrupted if we were to wait two weeks and have copies, you know, on hand? If you, I, don't know, I guess it'd be up to the mayor. I don't know how much you'd like to do. I can go down and run copies and bring them to you if you'd like to hold the item for later in the agenda, or if you wish to hold it for another meeting, that's up, up to the mayor and council. It, it, please, please don't take offense, uh, Alderman Berg, but. It's becoming a very common practice for this council to be indecisive. I mean, over and over and over again, we keep referring things back to committees. Uh, if you ask me, I would prefer that this thing get approved. And if there's changes, if the police station is the issue, uh, that can be addressed too. We've, we've always done that in the past. But uh, the, the capital improvements program, uh, as presented by the commission, I would hope that it passes. Uh, that's all I can say. An initial question uh, please for, do. Uh, please do. for Mr. Gephardt. Uh, assuming, obviously, when we bond, it makes sense for our bond council to roll all this up. There's an economy of scale that we achieve when we bond for the largest amount of money. Uh, and uh, so the, the $9 million represents a starting point. 
if down the line, for example, as we move along with the police station, uh, could you compare and contrast the advantages of going with nine million now versus waiting a period of time and getting an accurate figure or say nine million now and all of a sudden we realize we need to in three or four months come back for another two million dollars to uh, build the, the station that we feel is in the best interest of the community. If that, if that question is clear, could you give me, I guess, an idea of the advantages of doing it all at once or, or uh, scheduling nine million now and then if we need more, uh, going ahead with that in a couple of months? Uh, first to, to clarify, this, this would be the program that's being put in place and we'd start planning the debt issuance, but they actually wouldn't take place till about March. Uh, assuming at, at that point that we are ready, if, obviously the building has to be designed before it can be bid, but our regular program generally is, is March to April when we actually issue the debt. Uh, so until that time, you know, I guess we would still work with everyone within the process. This would just put the plan in place and for us to work with the architect and everyone else in, in, in that pursuit, but we would, we would not issue the debt at this time. Uh, additional $1 million would, uh, for the police facility, again, it's 20-year bonds. We're looking at about $720,000 right now at the current interest rates. Um, if you took that on a $120,000 parcel, which is considered average at this point, um, it would be about $4.42 on an average um, for the extra $1 million over 20 years. Thank you. Gives you an idea. Please uh, stay up there just in case. I'll learn Manny your second time. Same Thank issue. You. Um, I realize that this time next year we'll be passing another um, such capital improvements budget that will look at 2008 and thereafter, and that might vary for years 2008 and thereafter uh, as opposed to what this one lays out. Uh, I haven't had enough uh, thought put into it from my own uh, uh, perspective to feel clear and clean that the renovation of City Hall to the tune of the dollars listed is uh, absolutely necessary. The other question for me and that is how timely is that? Is that better to do later than 2008? So I'd like some commentary about that. Uh, this is not any sort of final conversation. We have next year to look at that. But that's a helpful cons uh, discussion for me to, to entertain for a few minutes here to have a better sense of what City Hall renovation is about why that's so significant in 2008, and why we need to spend that much money to do it. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I just wanted to clarify maybe why it appears that some of the aldermen are a little bit confused about where this missing information is. Um, when you look at document 1455, it refers to RO number 280-0607 and also resolution number 129-0607. And if we could just ask Madam City Clerk to remind all the secretaries that put together the agendas. Um, to us, we, the first number's left blank on all of our resolutions and everything when they come to council. The number that's important to us is 14-55. So if, if there's any way, I've noticed this with other committees, it's hard to find the documents when you have over 1,000 documents and you have to go through and look for number 280. So if you could somehow include the number, the handwritten number is the one that makes it easy for us to retrieve it. And I'd appreciate some assistance with that. Um, and secondly, just a couple comments in regards to the, the documents. I know Alderperson Manny asked a few minutes ago in regards to if the 370000 was going to be enough to remodel or renovate uh, Eisner Avenue project uh, in 2009. And in 2007, we're approving a million dollars for street paving. And then in 08, it goes up to one and a half million. And then in 09, it goes up to 1.75. So I would imagine that if we do need to move some more money in the 09 budget, we could probably take it out of street paving because that seems like a, a natural place for the, the money to come from. Um, and, and lastly, I'll just make a couple comments in regards to the, the police facility, uh, kind of the price moved around a little bit. Um, I think what, what was kind of the turning point for me is when you read the contract that we currently have signed with Zimmerman Design Group by the architect John Sabanesh, it's for $8.8 .8 million. And I think it was, uh, I can't remember the exact square footage, so I don't want to misspeak. But what, what we realized is that the price per square foot was about $130 a square foot. And when we approved the $13.5 million, that increased the price per square foot astronomically. So for me, the reason I voted to go back down to $9 million was because I wanted to hold 
the architect's feet to the fire. If he signed it saying he was going to build something for $8.8 .8 million, which equated to about $130 a square foot, I didn't see why we should um, change it uh, at that point in the game. He signed the contract. He said he could do it for X amount of dollars and build something uh, so large. And basically that is why I think uh, some of us on the committee voted to go back down to the $9 million because we had a signed contract and he needs to be held accountable for what he signed. Thank you. Paul McKinnison, second time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'm, I'm confused, though, on the price what Alderman Susha was talking about here. On the original RFP, the, the total budget for the new police facility is 10-8. Um, so I don't know. Maybe there's just some confusion there also. Um, is it possible, also, what I wondered, to separate out the police facility from the capital improvements budget? Can we vote on those items separately? I don't know if that's done, but is, that, is it a possibility to do that? The, did you explain the effect of how that yeah. kicks off another? Well, in the past, generally the capital improvements program has included all the projects and all the proposed debt issuance over the next five years, including tax and criminal financing. Uh, so it has been an all one encompassing plan. And um, I, th I would think that would be best to keep it intact as, as such, however we handle it. May I? Follow up question. Last question. May I, um, then what you were saying, just so I get a clear understanding, we can bond for more money. You know, we've got $9,000 right now, but we can bond for more in the future if we need it, correct? The city has the debt capacity. Obviously, the more you issue in debt, the larger your payments, the larger you're going to have to face in the future as far as when you sit here to pass the budget for, for uh, tax levy increases for debt service. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a lot of the same questions earlier today. I talked to John Savinash um, and questioned him, uh, can we build a police station that meets our budgetary requirements and meets the needs of our police department? Uh, he assured me that it could be done for this price level. Uh, but I also asked if we need to make some changes when he gets back to us with the schematics. If it's obvious to us that we need to make some changes, we've got that flexibility to do that. Because um, I wasn't comfortable moving forward unless there was that flexibility level there. Uh, Mr. Sabinash uh, seemed uh, very positive that we could have a police station built uh, that we'd be very proud of. Norman Ryan, second time. Thank you once again, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't look at this issue as uh, this council being indecisive. Uh, when the property was purchased on North 23rd Street, I believe it was done with a unanimous vote or a near unanimous vote and very little discussion um, because uh, Your Honor came out and said that we are going to build a 63,000 square foot facility with a budget of $13.5 million. That was a decisive uh, statement uh, the council pulled together and made it happen. Uh, so this is not any indecisiveness on the council. Right now, um, we do not have enough information. If, if we're going to budget $9 million, first of all, with the architect, we need to give him an idea of what we want. Are we going to build a 60,000 square foot facility? Are we going to go multi-story? We have 2.7 acres. I don't believe at this point that we can go slab on grade and get the seismic facility that we need. Building on a landfill slab on grade alone, we have to do a reinforced slab. We have to do a reinforced slab. Why not excavate, get rid of the garbage, and build a multi-story structure. 20,000, ground floor, that holds up the other 40,000. That would be called the garage basement. I think we should give those ideas to the architect and see if he can do that for our $9 million. <coughs> build the facility that we said we were going to build. Build it for our police department. Build it for our citizens. They deserve it. So at this point, um, I would like to make a motion to hold this document until we have more facts. Second. Until you have more what? 
until we have more facts, until we have more consensus on what we're going to do. I'm sorry, who did the second? I didn't. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gephardt. Uh, under discussion, just the motion to hold. I'm going to turn off all the lights. And then on just the motion to hold, I will ask uh, for discussion on the motion to hold. First one is all of the Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I will not support a motion to hold because I strongly believe we need to move ahead with this project and this appears to be a delay tactic. So I will not support a motion to hold. We need to move ahead and build the police station. Um, thank you. I would like to say, though, that uh, <clears throat> the Capital Improvements Commission met over a series of meetings, all of which every alderman was aware of those meetings that could have attended. Build and Use Committee met, and all every alderman could have attended. You've had the information, whether you read it or not is another issue. But the information has been out there. If you need information and you don't have it, when you read your uh, agendas, call my office, call the appropriate department head. We will provide you with any information that you need so that this doesn't stop becoming an issue. What Alderman Ryan has just proposed is an excellent example of how we go around in circles every time we start talking about this police station. We're not here to talk about what's going to be included or not included in the police station. All we're here to do is approve or not approve the capital improvements program so that we can move forward. That's all we're here to do tonight on, based on this. On the dis discussion, twice on the motion to hold. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. This is not a delay tactic. Uh, we need to get this police department built, and we need to do it properly. I believe that we need direction on what we're going to build. Uh, I believe that we need some consensus. What are we going to build? If we don't approve $9 million not knowing what we're going to build, uh, I do not believe that a two-week delay, maybe we can get a committee of the whole meeting together to discuss this issue, uh, will be a delay. This is not a delay tactic to delay the building of the police department. This is an attempt to build a proper police facility. Thank you. Alderman Warren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'm also not going to support holding this document. I feel perfectly comfortable with the capital improvements budget. I attended the meeting of the, of the capital improvements committee. Uh, I feel very comfortable on the $9 million that's been appropriated for the police station, but I'm also comfortable to find out tonight that that's not carved in stone, that if we do have to increase that $9 million, it will be possible but I'm not going to support holding this document. I think we've got to move on and pass this document and get on with building the police station. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I won't support holding this document either. I believe we've already heard that the architect has signed a contract with the city, said he will build us the police station we are asking him for. It will be adequate for our police department and it will be adequate for our citizens. And we need to move on. Yeah, this is delay, 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 and it's time to move forward. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm sure that the architect uh, would be happy to give us a couple different pictures of multiple configurations. He seemed very receptive to trying to meet our needs. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. This document also covers stormwater, sidewalk, fire department equipment, street repair, parking improvements, voting machines, software, transit CAD program, riverfront improvements, and so forth and so on. Thank you. One more. President Burke. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in one month, we're going to have to have a budget for next year. Uh, I think holding would be appropriate if this was June. I think given the amount of time that we have and the crunch we have with, uh, if you would tonight, folding all our documents uh, from the committees into finance so they can put this together, the pressure we always put on uh, our finance director, Rich Gephardt, I'm sure he feels like this is tax time for a tax accountant when we put our budget together. And so that, for me, uh, argues that we should uh, move not to hold the document but move it forward. As Alderman Borman mentioned, I'm comfortable in the fact that $9 million that not 
represent the end figure. We have some opportunity to uh, look at the police station, given that that's been the area that has certainly generated uh, more heat than light, shall we say, uh, in our discussion. And for me, the opportunity is it's open-ended enough that we can, uh, as the architect's plans develop and as we move towards balancing, if you would, the needs <coughs> of the uh, police department along with the, our debt service, the ability we have to adjust that either upwards, I'm assuming we won't be adjusting it downwards, uh, between now and March seems to be a reasonable window of time. So in that regard, I won't be supporting holding. Okay, let's call the roll. On the holding? On the motion to hold, yes. Meyer? No. Montemayor? No. Radke? No. Ryan? Aye. Susha? No. Verhasselt? No. Boren? No. Berg? No. Serta? Aye. Davis? No. Hannah? No. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? No. And Manny? No. Uh, 12, or I'm sorry, two ayes and 12 noes. Motion fails. On the motion to put uh, the accept and adopt the uh, capital improvements program, please call the roll. Uh, just, uh, quick. Attorney McLean. Thank you. Uh, just clarification. There is a typo in the, the caption. References adopting a 2006 program. The text has it correct. It should be 2007. Please make that notation. Mayor. Thank you, Attorney McLean. May I address all the Sushi's concern? Pardon? Can I address Alderman Sucha's concern about the documents? Yes, uh, uh, Madam City Clerk. Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment with Alderman Sucha's um, looking for documents and the logistics behind it. I don't want to spend a lot of time, but there's a reason for that. I write the documents first, the agenda comes after, so we'd have to rewrite the documents, but I can talk to you about that and maybe we can figure out a way to make it easier. But that's how we do it, so we can maybe work on something that'll make it easier for you to find your documents. I, you know, We'll look at that. Okay, thank you. Alderman Ratke, we're calling the vote after you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to follow up on Madam City Clerk's comments. It's just a simple matter of letting your departments know to put those numbers on there, and it takes care of the problem. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. On the motion to pass, to accept and adopt. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Ratke? Aye. Ryan? No. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Clayunis, Aye. Manny, Aye. and Meyer. Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Report of committees 9, 14, 56 by finance recommending amending the text of the municipal code of the city of Sheboygan relating to permit fees for initial connection to public sanitary and storm main. <laughs> Alderman Hanna, I would need a motion to accept and adopt and put the ordinance upon its passage. Motion to sorry. Motion to accept and adopt and put upon its passage. Second. Motion to second. Under discussion. Alderman um, Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just wanted to say that this is a wonderful um, result of putting a squeeze on the budget because what it did is um, Pete Fullerton and the Building Inspection Department took a look at some of the fees that we're currently charging. Um, some of the customers, and this per in particular situation relates to uh, connecting uh, stormwater and sanitary sewers. And what they found is they did a comparison to other communities. We were charging $100 for some of these connection fees, and other communities are charging upwards of $1,500 per connection fee. So what they did to help balance their budget is they did change um, some of the fees up to uh, $500 and another fee up to $1,000. And I think that they should be recognized for identifying an opportunity where um, it lessens the burden to the rest of the taxpayers. If somebody needs to have a sewer connection, um, I think they should have to pay what the surrounding communities are also charging. So I just think that uh, Pete Fullerton and his group should be recognized um, for coming up with this idea. Thank you. And under the... Uh the leadership of uh, Paulette Anders and uh, Pete Fullerton, they are doing a, just a wonderful job. On the uh, 1456 discussion, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, uh, re reiterate what uh, Alderman Susha was saying, is that while we, while we don't like to raise fees for our, our citizens, uh, these fees, as, as she mentioned, compared to other communities uh, are a real bargain, whether it be for residential, commercial, or industrial. So uh, 
I think the funds will be put to good use, but we should let the citizens know that compared to other committees, this is still a real bargain. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen Boren. President Byrne. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I wonder if we could take 1457 along with that. Language is essentially the same, uh, which passed unanimously through public protection and safety. I would have to ask uh, Alderman Hanna if you would like to incorporate that in your s motion. Who seconded? Who seconded? Alderman Boren did. Boren, would you be agreeable to that, yes. sir? Thank you very much. We will be acting on 1456, 1457 as they are related. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. We do need, need to make an amendment to the ordinance under Section 26966 under the paragraph A. It should read as follows. Applications for a permit for the privilege of making an initial connection to the public sanitary or storm main should should be changed to shall be accompanied by a fee of, and then the list of the following. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Is there a second to that second. motion? Okay. On, on the amendment discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries to amend. Now we will vote 456 and 457 uh, as amended. And Alderman Hanna, do you have a comment on that, sir? Yeah, just one. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in talking to Pete Fullerton, again, I think it's so important that when we charge these fees that they we start to make some progress that they reflect the cost to the city. Because if they don't, uh, you know, then you've got expenses that are, sp are spread amongst all the taxpayers when it only relates to those people having the services done. So, again, Pete's moving us in the right direction. This is the way to, to, yes. to look at our city as a business. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Okay, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Kittleson? Cleunis, Manny, aye. Meyer, aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 1458 through 1461. Lies over. Matters laid over 11, 1360, and RO, RO number 2750607. Aye. By the city clerk, submit an application for a, pri for a private well permit from Richard Stephanie. Alderman Meyer. Accept and file. Sorry, Your Honor, I, I lost this here. 1360, all we need is a motion to accept and file. I've got it in my hand. I would like to ask for a motion to accept and file. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion on that? There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1340, resolution number 136 by Alderman Groff, Hannah, Clayunas, Susha, Boren, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 206 budget. And we have 1340, 41, 42, 43. Alderman Hannah, if you would like to take those and just ask for a motion to put them upon the passage. I'd like to make a motion and for those three items to put upon his passage. Second. Four, Four items. items. Four items. There's a motion to second to put 14, 13, 40, 41, 42, 43 upon their passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1351, General Ordinance Number 380607 by Alderman Vanderweel, Serta, Meyer, and Montemayor, and Berg, relating to two hour parking limits so as to add from 2503 North 7th Street north to the south southernmost driveway of Aurora Sheboygan Memorial Hospital. Alderman Vanderweel is not here. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move to um, pass the general ordinance 380607. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Susha? Aye. Verhassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1462 and RC by law and licensing. 
stating that stating the findings of fact for the quasi-judicial hearing to determine whether the beverage operator's license number 4831 should be suspended or revoked and recommended that the license be revoked. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee. Motion and second under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. For Hassel? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. And Susha? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean? Thank you, Your Honor. 1463 is an order by the City Clerk committing a communication from Anthony Jovanovich, Chairman and CEO of the Community Bank and Trust, requesting an encroachment to run an underground fiber optic line from the corporate office at 604 North A Street under the East West Alley to their information technology office across the parking lot at 813 New York A. That will be referred to City Plan. 1464 is an ordinance granting Community Bank and Trust the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of the alley. Uh, for the installation of the underground fiber optic line. That would also be referred to City Plan Commission. 1465 is an RO by the Chief of Police uh, submitting a quarterly report showing the activities of the police department for the period commencing July 1, 2006 and ending September 30, 2006. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1466 is a communication from Robert Schaffer stating his opinions regarding the use of tasers. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1467 is a communication received by the Mayor from Randall J. French requesting a temporary exception to the City Ordinance 118-276 requiring a vehicle to be registered until he can have the Texas registration renewed by his son who is deployed in the ground. And that will also be referred to Public Protection and Safety. 1468 is submitting the final plat of Miller Field located in the southwest corner of Miller Road in the town of Sheboygan, transmitted by a home team. That will be referred to city plan. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. <laughs>